pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is a disease that frequently affects young adults. Um, most patients are between the ages of 20 and 40 years of age. Like other histiocytic diseases, uh, pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is caused by the accumulation of abnormal immune cells called Langerhans cells that accumulate within the lungs of these patients and over time cause an inflammatory process to happen that eventually leads to a number of complications in some individuals. Pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is a disease of unknown cause. In other words, we don't know precisely why certain individuals develop this disease. Although the cause is not known with certainty, we do, however, know that there is a strong link, a strong association with cigarette smoking in the overwhelming majority of patients with this disease. Mo there have been many studies that have shown that 95% um, or more of patients with pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis are smokers or have been exposed to significant secondhand smoke exposure. Some patients will rightly ask whether smoking is the only reason why they develop this disease. And that's a very good question because whereas there are many millions of people who smoke, very, very few of those smokers will develop pulmonary Langerhans cell histocytosis, which suggests that although smoking is important in the causation of disease and probably is the key inciting factor that causes disease, there have to be other factors that explain why certain individuals develop this disease. And some of those factors may be genetic factors or possibly some other factors such as infections by viruses. The symptoms of pulmonary Langerhans cell histocytosis are nonspecific, meaning that virtually all the patients who present to their doctors uh, with this disease will complain of shortness of breath, especially shortness of breath on exertion, and cough. A proportion of patients, maybe up to a third of all patients with pulmonary Langerhans cell histocytosis, will have no symptoms at the time of diagnosis and are found incidentally, meaning that um, a chest x-ray may be, for example, performed for a reason such as uh, preoperative assessment and the identification of abnormalities on the chest x-ray might then lead to the diagnosis even though uh, that patient might not have any specific symptoms or complaints. Most adults with pulmonary Langerhans cell histocytosis have disease that is localized to the chest, meaning that the disease only affects their lungs. About 10 or maybe 15 percent of patients will not just have disease restricted to the lungs, but may also have disease in other sites, such as the skin or bone or the pituitary gland or maybe other sites. In those individuals, um, one may find that patients will complain of other symptoms, such as, for example, pain, if there is bony involvement, 
or a skin rash or other symptoms relating to other organs that may be affected by disease. There are some tests that your doctor may do if the diagnosis of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is suspected. A breathing test, which is formally known as a pulmonary function test, may be performed. And the purpose of that test would be to determine whether there is an abnormality in lung function caused by the disease. A CT scan of the chest is often performed when pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is suspected. Sometimes the appearance or the images on the chest CT scan can be extremely informative and can be very helpful at enabling your doctor to establish a diagnosis or at least raise the suspicion of the possibility of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis. In some patients, a lung biopsy is necessary to establish a definitive diagnosis. And the biopsy of the lung may be performed usually by two ways. The first is by inserting a scope, which is a flexible tube with a camera at the end that may be inserted from either the mouth or the nose and guided into the lung. And through the scope, a biopsy forceps might be guided and biopsies may be taken from the lung. An alternative way to biopsy the lung is by performing what is called a surgical lung biopsy. That biopsy involves the use of a surgical approach to go through the side of the chest and obtain small pieces of lung tissue that may enable a definitive diagnosis. Once a diagnosis of pulmonary Langerhans cell histocytosis is established, every patient uh, will need to be assessed individually with respect to treatment and management needs. The first and the most important aspect of treatment is to help and assist with smoking cessation. As mentioned earlier, cigarette smoking is a key inciting factor of disease. And we firmly believe that stopping smoking is a crucial component of the management of this disease. For some patients, stopping smoking is all that is necessary for the disease to be controlled. And some patients will go into remission and will have little or no impairment in lung function over time. There are, however, a subgroup of patients who have disease that will not respond to smoking cessation and develop progressive disease with complications. For those patients, sometimes additional treatment is necessary. Some of those additional treatments include chemotherapy agents, which are agents that usually are used to treat certain cancers, as well as other types of medications such as prednisone. Again, the decision to treat 
has to be individualized to each patient depending on the extent of disease and the types of complications that that particular patient suffers from. Other treatments that may be utilized include the use of oxygen therapy for patients who have usually advanced disease. For patients who develop a collapsed lung, which is a condition that usually develop, develops when a bleb or a cyst on the surface of the lung ruptures and allows air to get into the chest cavity. Those patients may require a surgical procedure called a pleurodesis, which is a procedure by which the lung is fettered to the inside of the chest wall and minimizes the risk of future collapse of the lung. In some other patients who develop the complication of pulmonary hypertension, which is a condition associated with an increased pressure in the circulation in the lung, other treatments may be used, such as so-called vasodilator therapy, which are medications that lower the pressure within the pulmonary arteries and veins. The primary goal of treatment is to preserve lung function over time and to help individuals with this disease to be as functional as possible. Patients with pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis can develop certain late effects or long-term complications of this disease. For example, some patients develop what is called cystic lung disease. This means that cysts or holes start to develop within the lungs. These may be extensive to the extent that on the CT scan, for example, the lung may look like Swiss cheese. Because of the development of extensive cystic disease, a lot of normal lung tissue is lost. And so patients can become very symptomatic and very short of breath with minimal activity. Patients who develop severe cystic lung disease may need lung transplantation down the road as management of this long-term complication. Other patients can develop severe involvement of the arteries and the veins within the lung circulation, resulting in severe pulmonary hypertension. That condition may in turn cause a lot of strain on the heart that pumps blood through that circulation. And so some patients may develop complications associated with failure of the heart. Other patients may develop recurrent <clears throat> pneumothoraces. As stated previously, a pneumothorax is when there is a rupture of a bleb or a cyst allowing air to get into the chest cavity. Sometimes this can happen multiple times in some patients. And as a result of that, some patients require surgical procedures done to prevent repetitive collapse.